Hello there everyone, my name is Ren and today I'm going to give you guys a really quick overview of this app called Obsidian that I've discovered and how it'll help you as a student. So I'm currently a student in university and I found that Obsidian is an absolutely transformative app that can really revolutionize the way that we learn and process information and especially be able to help the way that we take our notes. So I know that there are a lot of really great applications out there for note taking such as Evernote or Notion, which I've personally used for the past year or so. And I'm going to explain how Obsidian pits against those great apps and how you can use it to be the most efficient with your learning. The first thing I want to cover in this video is the ease of access. So what I mean by that is the great amount of efficiency that you have when using the software. Here I'm currently viewing this note which is basically my outline for this video on a preview page. So what I mean by that is I'm unable to actually edit any of this text that I have going on here. And this in itself, I think is a really great feature of Obsidian. I'm able to review my notes after I've made them and I'm studying for an exam. I'm able to just look through everything and not have to worry about typing something in. This is just a really great, pretty overview of everything that I've typed out. I've also tried to replicate kind of a way that students like to take notes, um, which is using this bullet point method and I've kind of employed that here so you can see that and use that in your own note taking as well. Obsidian is especially efficient in the way that you can edit your notes. So I can open up an editing pane over here and I'm able to type in my notes directly through this pane and view it in the preview. So the second point I had is Markdown Incorporation. And I think that this is especially important for computer science students. Something that will completely change the game for you is the ability to add code directly into your notes. So if you happen to have a particular line of code that you're trying to study at the moment, then you'll be able to access it through Obsidian. So another great feature is that you're easily able to add pictures into your notes. So I'm going to demonstrate this here. So I'm going to open up an editing pane and I'm currently trying to add a picture into something that I'm going to be talking about later in this video, which is price. So I have a picture on my desktop at the moment and I'm just going to go ahead and add it right here. Okay, so I've added the picture and you can see that it directly appears in my preview screen. So the next thing I wanna talk about is being able to embed your files. And here I'm going to open this page and view it in the preview mode. So you can see that I'm able to attach pictures, able to attach audio files, um, and then you're able to attach all these things that they've shown here. Everything that's on here can be embedded into your notes. If you need to add in a PowerPoint slide, uh, you can put a picture of it in here and it'll be able to show up and you can refer to that throughout your notes. So I think that the biggest advantage Obsidian has for students specifically is the concept of linking ideas to mimic your brain organization. So what I mean by that is all of these little purple things that are underlined are actually notes that have been linked. So I can click on any one of these and be able to officially transfer over to that specific note page that has been created. Now, all of these things that I have linked to are actually from the startup package that Obsidian offered, which is over here, and you get this once you download Obsidian. But through this, you are able to click on any sort of linked ideas that you have. And here you are given some tips to be able to click on all of these links, and you can go through that by yourself. But essentially, through this, I can show typing brackets, and then I'm able to add in a link here. You can also change the name of this link and how it appears on your screen. So as you can see here, this is currently called folding and that is what it's called. But if I wanna call this something else like folded pages or something that relates into my sentence, I can do that as well. And it'll appear as that onto the preview screen. So a great idea that Obsidian employed into their work is the ability to link panes. So if I minimize the screen, you can see that I have a scrolling bar and I'm going to go ahead and close this page here. So I'm going to open up the editing screen in a different page and you can see I have this little linked page file here. So currently these two pages are linked, which means that when I scroll through them, they will scroll at the same pace in a way that everything is matched up directly. 
So once I unlink the pane, I'm now able to scroll directly on this side alone and then on this side alone separately. Another thing that I want to touch on is the really beautiful formatting of Markdown. So through this, I'm going to go ahead and click on this page and it teaches you how to use Markdown and use footnotes, use math, etc., and be able to turn it into something that looks like this. And it shows you exactly how to do that. So when you're going through your setup process on Obsidian, make sure to open this page. It's just called format your notes and you'll be able to look through and figure out how all of that works. Obsidian also has really great multitasking features, meaning that I'm able to open multiple windows at once and because I have a really large monitor, I can review all of my notes in one place and this can be really helpful for when you're studying for an exam. There are so many features that are available through Obsidian, and I haven't even showed you all of them. These are just some of the ones that I think are important for students to know. So there's an infinite number of customizable features, and it's important to be able to learn some keyboard shortcuts. So on this page, we're able to see all of the keyboard shortcuts that Obsidian is offering at the moment, and you can also customize all of these. And basically by using this app, you don't even have to touch your mouse. You can navigate the entire site just through your keyboard. So a really helpful helpful keyboard shortcut is command P and command P opens up something called a control panel which basically gives you access to all of the other keyboard shortcuts you need and you can just search for them within that command panel. Another thing is command and option and the left arrow key and this allows you to just return back to the previous page that you were on. Another one that I find very helpful is command and N which opens a new note right away for you and it's a really quick keyboard shortcut. Another really great feature is to be able to customize whether or not you are using light or dark mode. So currently this is in dark mode um, and we can go through here and go to the appearance section in your settings and be able to switch it to moonstone mode, which is a light mode. Um, and clearly it looks very different. I think that the creators originally intended for Obsidian to be used in a dark mode just because it matches the name a little bit better, but you're definitely able to use light mode if you desire. So. Probably the main feature that I've been saving here is the graph view feature. Graph view is found in your side tab here and it says open graph view and it'll open in a separate window for me and I can just basically use this. You can also zoom in and out by scrolling on your trackpad or on your scroll wheel and you're able to access so many things through this wonderful graph view page. By hovering over one single dot, you're able to see the connections between all of those ideas. So currently they have many different concepts that are already connected. And this is something that is found in Rome research, but I think is wonderful in Obsidian as well. So currently we're on the Obsidian script page and you can see all of the pages that I've linked to and you can see how all of your ideas are essentially connected. And I think that's amazing. So you're also able to drag these ideas and move them around. And it's kind of a interactive feature that I think is extremely important in terms of how you are organizing and processing your notes. Another really great feature of Obsidian is the ability to record native audio. So there's an audio feature in here and you can add in this feature through a plugin, which again, you can find just through your settings folder here. And there is an entire thing of plugins that you can just look through and figure out your audio recording. And you can really take advantage of that by recording your lectures during class. Another great thing about Obsidian, as I showed you a little bit earlier, is that it stores everything onto your computer directly as a markdown file. So you're not storing anything into the cloud. Um, as you can see here on my page, I have the Obsidian help folder, I have my research notes folder, and everything is saved in here as a .md file, except for, of course, this picture that I've added in here. But those are markdown files, and you can use those anywhere and through any type of software that's not Obsidian. And so just in case Obsidian is actually deleted as an app someday or something happens to your information, it will never be lost as long as it's on your hard drive. And you can correspond that with Google Drive or with Dropbox or anything that you'd like and you're always able to keep your information safe. So I think that the biggest con of using Obsidian for me so far is that it requires a large learning curve. So it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to using Obsidian and it doesn't take a lot of time so far that you're wasting your time, but I think that it takes more time necessary than interfaces such as Notion, which is just really straightforward and you're able to create notes without worrying about too many things in terms of markdown and stuff like that. I think you should take your time to figure out how to organize your personal organization system. And if you guys need help, 
organizing a productivity system within Obsidian, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a new video about that in the near future. So Markdown especially takes a little bit of time to get used to if you've never used it before. And that's just for me personally as well. I'm not a CS student and I've never touched Markdown before. And so this was a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I was able to figure it out within a few hours. So I feel like you guys shouldn't be struggling too much with it. Probably just tinker with it for a few minutes, go through some of the startup files and you should be familiar with it. It also might be a little bit tricky for you to memorize the different functions within the app and the keyboard shortcuts. For me, I've showed you guys a few here, but they're pretty self-explanatory. For example, control N for new page, and that's just the first letter of new. So you should be able to figure them out, but it does take some time to be able to get used to that. One of the main pros I see through Obsidian is the great price. So Obsidian is absolutely free. It's currently in beta mode, which means that there are some kinks that are still working out. And I've showed you guys that through glitching when typing in images. And here I will show you it again. But basically what happens is once we have an image in here, if I type something, you can see the image sort of glitching out, which isn't great. So every single time I type a letter, it glitches, but it's fine without the image in there. So in order to get access to Obsidian, you just have to come onto their website, which I will link in the description below and click on this link here for your specific operating system. And it does this for you. So it should be really simple. You used to have to apply in order to download Obsidian, but now you're able to just click onto their website and download it straight away. I find that Obsidian is probably the best alternative to Rome Research, which is the main app that is getting a lot of hype at the moment, but they have a plan for $15 a month for normal users and for us students, it's 50% off, $7.50 per month, which for me personally is a really big expense. If you think about all of your things adding up together, if you have a Netflix subscription, I guess you could cancel that and cancel your Spotify subscription while you're at it. You also have to be under 21 and have a .edu email address and provide evidence that you earned under 30K last year. So it just seems like a really big process that I don't necessarily wanna go through and I don't think a lot of you would want to go through either. And Obsidian is equal as good, if not better than Rome Research. So as I mentioned earlier, Notion was actually my note-taking app of choice. It is actually free for students and has been free for students, but the personal plan is now free for everybody with unlimited blocks. So you can go check that out. But if you guys want me to make a more detailed video about Notion versus Obsidian, you can let me know and I'll kind of give you a rundown of all of that. The final question of this video is, is Obsidian worth trying? And yes, I would say that it's definitely great to give Obsidian a try. And I've given Obsidian a chance and it has showed me so many wonderful things and I'm able to do so much with it. It's really revolutionized my learning and I think that I'm able to process my thoughts a lot better through Obsidian. My personal plan is to get through Obsidian and do some daily journaling to keep track of my life. This way I'm able to actually plan out my life better by linking together a lot of ideas and I'm interested in seeing how that'll work. So if you guys are also wondering about that, I can make a video about that later um, and how I connect my own personal life with different links. I'm also going to be taking some basic notes from all of my classes and doing some extra research for extra class content for the next few days and the next few weeks and I will completely be ditching Notion and I'll let you guys know how that goes as well. I have a more comprehensive review of Obsidian coming very soon so if you're looking forward to that please let me know and as I said I will be definitely willing to help all of you guys out with navigating Obsidian and if you have any questions about it please let me know and I can make a new video about that in the future. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. If you have a question please leave that down below as well and I'll be happy to get to all of you. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope I'll see you guys in the next one.